Hello, I'm Vicki Estrada. I'm a landscape architect in San Diego. Welcome to my fireplace chat here from my hotel in, um, in Seattle, which is the main reason I'm doing this from a distance. The cool spot that I chose, surprisingly, is the village in Rancho Santa Fe. There's something special and unique about it. Um, first off, the history. Uh, Juan Osuna was given a Spanish land grant um, in the early 1800s, and the Osuna family actually lived on the property for over 100 years. You can see in the upper right-hand corner a picture of the restored Osuna ranch house, the adobe, uh, which still exists today. And on the low side, you could see kind of the, um, what the terrain looked like. The Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad Company actually bought the property from the Osunas, thinking that they could plant all these eucalyptus trees and use them for railroad ties. But as it turned out, the eucalyptus wood is too dry, too brittle, and didn't work at all, much like what happened in Scripps Ranch. The company then hired L.G. Sennard, one of the prominent land planners at the time, to come up with a plan for the, for the entire area, actually, but the village itself, you can see the upper left-hand corner. Then they hired Rico N. Jackson. Lillian Rice was an architect to work for them. She refined the plan that you see in the bottom half. Lillian Rice was an incredible woman, um, an architect. She went to Spain to actually study the architecture in Spain when she was asked to redesign the village. And she got on the tractors herself. She did a lot of the work and she actually spent her last days living in the village itself. Pretty, pretty amazing woman. On the left-hand side, you can see a map of the um, Rancho Santa Fe, as they called it, um, by the um, Santa Fe Land Improvement Company, and that's obviously where the land Santa Fe came from. On the right-hand side is a map of the actual covenant, this invisible arm, huge HOA that governs everything. This bird's eye photograph. You can see, like in the lower left-hand corner, see there's parking kind of hidden in the back. The new urbanist concepts that you see today, there's no parking lots in the front. The main street, it's, it's predominantly some street parking and, and sidewalks and very much a pedestrian area with parking area behind. This is a view of the main street looking toward the east. The building on the right-hand side became the improvement company's um, main office, and that building still exists today. And you can see, looking straight east, uh, this shot of um, in the early 1920s, uh, how it orients toward the dip in the mountains behind. This is the view today. Look at the gorgeous trees that frame that view and the sight lines. Again, the village has these beautiful sight lines, very simple. It is symmetrical, but somehow you don't get this bored feeling. And we're looking from the inn itself, looking toward the east. Now we're gonna turn around and look at what the inn looks like from um, that spot that I took previously. And you can see the, the photographs, again, frame this gorgeous inn at Rancho Santa Fe, which we happen to stay at a couple weekends ago so I could really understand the place tw you know, 24 hours a day for, for an entire weekend. And Lillian Rice designed the hotel itself. Here's a video that you can just listen. And it is such a calming, this is the main intersection in the village. Stop signs at every intersection, there's no traffic lights in the village core at all. And you just kind of slow down. There's and that building in white is the original building that you saw earlier. This is a senior center designed by Lillian Rice uh, behind the actual inn at Rancho Santa Fe. Um, it is on the National Register, a very, very impressive building that's still in use today. Again, a lot of adobe. The character, the Spanish tile that was developed by Lillian, still dominates the design guidelines today. The sidewalk actually delicious. A sidewalk um, has a sidewalk uh, eating area, and you can see me here walking toward the uh, toward the inn. Um, to get a sense of the kind of spatial character that, that you actually have. Now, one of the really unique things I like about the village are the sideways passage, the side passages and nooks and crannies. That you're walking along the main drag and you look to your right and there's shops and businesses that you can actually see that are not on the main drag 
and they feed into the parking lots in the back. So that's kind of a neat special feature. Here, we're at the Mill Floor restaurant looking toward the east and mid-block. You can walk across the entire, the entire block in this very pedestrian scale area. Again, you just slow down. I've been here several times over the last few years and the, the Russian hun, the hustle and bustle of work, you just slow down. Here we're looking at some row houses at Lillian Design. Um, classic row houses that are in fact on the County Historic Register. Pretty impressive, very simple. Note that there's color differences as well. Not every building was white. Some of them were actually a little bit more earth tone. But you can see some of the vegetation, some of the setbacks. This is a uh, cafe on the main drag as well, um, where unfortunately only three or so remain in the village. There used to be a lot more, and, and uh, gentrification has actually kind of taken hold, and the rents have become too high for a lot of the businesses. So some very neat outdoor eating areas, which again, you could see some of the passageways. This is right next to um, one of the outdoor cafes. And this is now an attorney's office. Again, one of the ramifications of increased rents is only attorneys, banks, and real estate offices can afford to be there. Uh, 20 years ago, there were a lot more shops and restaurants and a lot more people walking on the street. That being said, to me, that's still a very special place. Look at this view, look at the door, look at the detail. You know, it almost feels like you're really not in the United States. It feels like you're in Spain. So she did a great job, Lillian did, in trying to convey that feeling of Spanish revival architecture. Look at even the ground, the, the paving on the ground. So to summarize why I chose this, Lillian Rice's memory is everywhere. Okay, there's a sense of history that I mentioned. It's, it's very charming and walkable. It is a uh, sense of calm. There are no traffic lights. Uh, there's a lot of intimate side spaces and it has a lot of new urbanist qualities. You just slow down. Is it perfect? No, as I mentioned, um, the demographics are, it's fairly wide and conservative. Um, and in, in the two block area, for example, there's 11 banks, okay, and there's banks, realtors, and attorney's offices, and there's several people who live there that are concerned about that. They simply can't afford to stay. Some of the antique shops and some of the other little boutiques have been, they have to leave. They can't afford to stay there. So that summarizes why I think, for me, this is a very special place. Now, I was asked by The Voice as well if I could if I wanted to give a shout out to any topic that I wanted to discuss. So my shout out for today is I'm on the board of directors of Groundwork San Diego, whose purpose is to really um, improve the watershed of Choyas Creek. One of the ideas that we're proposing, and we've presented to the city council already and to the mayor and uh, the city council of Lemon Grove is that we would love to see a Choyas Creek regional park Different concept. It's not a regional park like um, Mission Trails or Mission Bay or Balboa Park. It's a little bit different. It honors the canyons, it honors the creeks, and it's going to create more trails, more trailheads, um, and actually allow people to recreate and enjoy the open spaces that exist within the Choice Creek watershed. So that's my shout out, and hopefully in a few years this will be a reality. Thank you again, Voice of San Diego, for allowing me to do this for you.